Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. I'm happy to be with you again today as we continue telling the story of Christmas as it's recorded in the Gospel of Luke. So today I want to pick up on the 26th verse of the first chapter and we find these words. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could possibly mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Well, if you're like me, you've heard this story many times, and, and so it doesn't strike you as all that strange. But if you can think about what it was like the first time it was told, and what it was like to be Mary, well then this story gets really, really strange. So let's try to look at it and see what we find here. It says here in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. Now we talked about that before and how uh, God had given Zechariah and Elizabeth the privilege of having a birth in their old age and strange things happened about that one. And now something stranger is even about to happen. God sent the angel Gabriel, the same angel that went to Elizabeth, to a virgin named Mary in a town called Nazareth. Now there are two important things here. First off, Mary is a young girl. Yeah, she's engaged. And in those days, the engagement was the most important piece of the marriage process. So much so that if you were engaged, you really had to get divorced to break it. Not like today's world where people get engaged and get unengaged at sometimes rapid rates. But Mary's a young girl. The best we can gather from the scholarship is she was probably about 14 or 15. She wasn't really experienced. And we know that she was poor. We know that because she came from Nazareth. And Nazareth was a really, really poor village. In fact, it was disdained by the Jews. Later on, it was said, one person confronting Jesus said, and isn't it said that nothing good could come from Nazareth? Nazareth was about the worst place to be from that you could be in the eyes of the Jewish community. But yet, that's where Mary is found by the angel. And I think there's something significant about that. God goes looking not for the most important, not for the most profound, but for the forgotten the ignored. Now granted Mary is much bigger than that piece but he couldn't have chose chosen a better place to start the birth story if he wants to say that everybody's included in the story. Well it goes on to say that the angel comes to her and says you found favor with God the Lord is with you and then I, I really like this wording. <laughs> it 
It says, confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Confused and disturbed. <laughs> I bet you that's the least of the issues here. Downright astonished. I mean, Mary had no idea this was going to happen. Oh, she was happy for Elizabeth, who was her cousin, to get pregnant. And I'm sure she was happy to hear the stories. But the thing here is that the Messiah has been foretold for many, many centuries. And many, many Jewish women, maybe most of them, had hoped that they would be the way the Messiah would come. Now, the Messiah was not to be a miracle-working person. He was to be a human king like David, a warrior, uh, a ruler in this world, not anything about another world. And, and to be the mother of that person would be fantastic. And so here comes the angel and tells Mary, you're the one. You're it. You're the choice. And I'm sure she was overwhelmed with all kinds of emotions. And the angel even addresses that because the greatest emotion she was overwhelmed with comes out in the very first statement of the angel after that. He says, don't be afraid, Mary. Don't be afraid. I don't know how many times the Bible talks about don't being afraid. Well, actually, I do know how many times. Someone counted it's 365 times. I don't know how many situations we find ourselves in. Someone like Mary, confused and disturbed. And at that very moment, God says, don't be afraid. It's as though fear is our normal first response. And if you've been afraid when something happened, you're just human. You're not weak or lousy or something. You're just human. But that's not what God wants. He didn't want it for Mary. He doesn't want it for me. He doesn't want it for you. So don't be afraid, you found favor. When, when we get our lives in line with what God wants, we find favor. I wonder what that word really means. I don't mean the original Greek or Aramaic here. I, I just, what does it mean to be favored by God? Well, one thing's for sure. It means he really, really loves you and me. So he goes on to say here, you're going to have a baby. His name will be Jesus. He'll be very great. The Lord will give him the throne of David. But more than that, he ends this little piece by saying, his kingdom will never end. Well, the story of Christmas is the the final stage of this never-ending kingdom. I hope you'll be back the rest of this week and next, and we'll hear the whole thing. Thanks for listening. If you have a prayer concern or a need, please give us a call. We'll do whatever we can as fast as we can. God bless you. I'll talk to you tomorrow.